Ibrahim, the upper limb. It has been seen that the upper limb is made up of four parts: the shoulder region, arm, or brachium; the forearm or antebrachium, arm extend from the shoulder to the elbow joint; the forearm extend from the elbow joint to the wrist joint; and then the hand or menis. The further subdivision of these parts: the shoulder region includes the pectoral region or the breast region on the front of the chest the axilla or the armpit the scapular region on the back comprising around the scapula to start the study we will study the pectoral region pectoral region lies on the front of the chest it uh, consists of structures connecting the upper limb to anterolateral chest wall so when we study about pectoral region first of all the first layer is the skin if we go downwards the other layer which we come across is the superficial fascia we will study in detail about the superficial fascia the superficial fascia of pectoral region is visualized after the skin has been incised it contains the moderate amount of fat and is continuous with the surrounding region so in the females the mammary gland is the most important of all the contents of the superficial fascia there are the fibrous septa given off by the fascia which support the lobes of the gland of the mammary gland the skin covering the gland so uh, the contents of the superficial fascia the contents include the fat which is the most important content of the superficial fascia the subcutaneous fat in addition to fat the superficial fascia pectoral region contains the cutaneous nerves they are derived from the cervical plexus and from the intercostal nerves we will study in the detail later the cutaneous vessels branches of internal thoracic and the posterior intercostal arteries and then a mu muscle that is platysma it is a subcutaneous muscle it is present in the superficial fascia and in the females the most important content of the superficial fascia is the breast or the mammary gland to study the cutaneous nerves of the pectoral region uh, we will divide the pectoral region into two parts to make it easier to learn um, make an imaginary line from the second rib to the lateral border of the deltoid the area above the second rib and the upper half of the deltoid is supplied by the supraclavicular nerve the supra clavicular nerve it is derived from the cervical plexus and it has the nerve roots c3 and c4 the supra clavicular nerve is further divided in this region into three parts the medial intermediate and the lateral supraclavicular nerves they supply as we told the skin over the upper half of the deltoid and from the clavicle down to the second rib this whole area is supplied by the supraclavicular nerve and have the nerve roots c3 and c4 it is these branches arise from the cervical plexus after c4 the c5 the c6 c7 c8 and t1 these all nerve roots takes part in forming the brachial plexus so these these nerve roots are involved in supplying the arm region they are not involved in the pectoral region we will exclude the c5 till the t1 from the pectoral region we will not study in this region as they will supply to the arm only so c3 c4 supraclavicular nerve supply the upper part of the pectoral region after discussing the upper part of the pectoral region the supraclavicular nerve now we go down to the lower part of the clavicular uh, pectoral region um, there are two nerves that supply the lower part of the pectoral region anteriorly it is anterior cutaneous nerve and laterally is the lateral cutaneous nerve 
the anterior cutaneous nerve come from the nerve roots T2, T3, T4, T5 and T6. But on the lateral side, the nerve root, the T2, gives off intercostal brachial nerve. Uh, the T2 nerve root does not take part in forming the lateral cutaneous nerve. The uh, T2 giving the intercostal brachial nerve supply the skin of the floor of the axilla, the upper half of the medial side of the forearm of the arm. The lateral cutaneous nerve derived from the uh, nerve roots T3, T4, T5 and T6 as T2 is not included in it. So it is an interesting thing that the area supplied by the nerve root C3 and C4 directly meets the area supplied by the spinal nerve T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. And this is because the fact that the intervening nerve, the C5, C8 to C8 and T1 have been pulled away to supply the arm area. So it may also be noted that normally area supplied by the adjoining spinal nerves, they overlap. But because of the uh, nerve root excluding from C5 to C8 and T1, there is hardly any overlap between the area supplied by the C3, C4 and T2, T3 below. After knowing the cutaneous nerves of the pectoral region, now we will start for the cutaneous vessels in the superficial fascia of pectoral region. The cutaneous vessels, there are two uh, branches, there are two sets of the cutaneous vessels that supply the superficial fascia of pectoral region. Uh, anteromedial side of pectoral region is supplied by the internal thoracic artery. They accompany the anterior cutaneous nerves as we have already discussed. So the anterior cutaneous nerve are accompanied by the internal thoracic artery or the perforating branches of the internal thoracic artery. The, uh, in the females, the second, third and fourth of these branches are larger and they supply the breast. Otherwise, these perforating branches are very small branches and they accompany the anterior cutaneous nerves and they supply the anteromedial aspect of the pectoral region. On the lateral side, the lateral cutaneous nerve are accompanied by the posterior intercostal arteries or the lateral cutaneous branches of the posterior intercostal artery. So there are two sets of the vessels that supply the superficial fascia pectoral region. The anterior cutaneous nerves are accompanied by the perforating branches of internal thoracic artery and the lateral cutaneous nerves are accompanied by the lateral cutaneous branches of posterior intercostal arteries. So after, as we have discussed in the superficial fascia, the subcutaneous ferrous, these cutaneous nerves, the cutaneous vessels and a muscle that is called platysma. Platysma is a subcutaneous muscle, means it is present just beneath the skin. Platysma is a thin broad sheet of a uh, subcutaneous muscle. The fibers of the platysma muscle, they arise from the deep fascia. The deep fascia is also called the pectoral fascia. It covers the pectoralis major muscle. So, when we say the, uh, the pectoral fascia, we are talking about the deep fascia only. If we, are, we want to talk about the superficial fascia, we have to spell accordingly the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. But if we are talking about the deep fascia of pectoral region, we can say it is pectoral fascia because it is the second name of the deep fascia. The platysma muscle, it, the fibers of this muscle, it arises from the deep fascia or the pectoralis fascia, pectoral fascia. 
Then after rising from the patellar fascia, it runs upward and medially and it crosses the clavicle. After crossing the clavicle, the, it pa passes to the side of the neck and it encloses many important structures of the neck like the external jugular vein. Then it goes upward and it is inserted into the base of the mandible and the skin over the posterior and lower part of the face. So the pectoral platysma is a muscle of the neck region, mainly of the neck region and also present in the pectoral region. It is arising from the deep fascia or the pectoral fascia. Then it moves upward and medially crossing the clavicle. It crosses the clavicle uh, subcutaneously and the side of the neck enclosing the bottom structure of the neck and inserted into the base of the mandible and into the skin over the posterior and lower part of the face. The platysma muscle has a nerve supply which comes from the branch of the facial nerve. When the angle of the mouth is pulled down, this muscle, platysma muscle contracts. The wrinkle of the skin of the neck is formed by the contraction of the platysma muscle. The platysma also protects the external jugular vein which is a very important vein of the neck which lies under underlies the muscle. So it protects the external jugular vein from the external pressure. So it's an important muscle of the neck and it arises from the deep fascia of the pectoral region. We have discussed the contents of superficial fascia, uh, the fat, cutaneous nerves, cutaneous vessels, platysma muscle. There is also another important content in the females that is breast. It is a mem or memory gland. It is a very vast topic and, and we will discuss it in another topic in another video. So thank you so much.